Howdy! Welcome to my introduction to the Transmission Electron Microscopy class. My name is Kelvin Scheer, and I am an assistant professor in the Department of Material Science and Engineering at Texas A&M University. The aim of this online class is to give you an overview of what is TEM and what TEM can do. I'll just use one slide to share with you my background. I did my undergraduate studies at University of Sydney in Australia. My bachelor degree is from biomedical engineering. Believe it or not, I also have a degree in finance. I then stayed at the University of Sydney and completed my PhD in the Department of Mechanical Engineering. My PhD advisors are Professors Judy Carney and Simon Ringer. During my PhD, I used both TEM and atom probe to study the solid clusters in a high-strength, low-alloy steel. After my PhD, I joined Professor Kevin Hamker's group at Johns Hopkins University. I was the in-house TEM person and using TEM as a tool to study the deformation mechanisms in boron carbide and magnesium. In 2018, I joined the Department of Material Science and Engineering at Texas A&M as a microscopy faculty. At Texas A&M, we use a special TEM technique called precession electron diffraction to study deformation and phase transformation in materials. The textbook we're going to use for this course is Transmission Electron Microscopy by Williams and Carter. This is also referred as the Bible for TEM. To complement the Williams and Carter books, we will also use the resources from a few other books. The first one is The Microstructural Characterization of Materials by Brendan and Kaplan. A few chapters of the book are devoted to TEM and TEM-based techniques. If you want to have a quick read about TEM, it's a very nice book. We will also use the information from Introduction to Scanning Electron Microscopy, or STEM. The last one is the Aberration Corrected Imaging in Transmission Electron Microscopy by Ernie. There will be five sections of this TEM course, or five playlists, on YouTube. They will be on the basics, diffraction, imaging, spectroscopy, and other TEM-related techniques. In basics, we'll start by talking about the electron scattering in TEM, then we'll move to the instrumentation, talking about the electron sources, lenses, etc. We will also talk about sample preparation. In these two examples specifically, the one on the left is electropolishing to prepare metal samples, the one on the right is a FIB liftout for site-specific samples. The second section is on electron diffraction. We'll talk about why and how diffraction happens in TEM. We will then discuss the parallel beam diffraction and indexing, Kikuchi diffraction, and convergent beam diffraction. In parallel beam diffraction, you see spots. In Kikuchi diffraction, you see lines. In convergent beam electron diffraction, you see disks. In the third section of this course, we'll discuss imaging and the origin of contrast. There are three types of contrast, mass thickness contrast, diffraction contrast, and phase contrast. The mass thickness contrast is used to image stained biological samples. The example here shows the mitochondria in a cell. Diffraction contrast is used to image crystallographic defects, such as dislocations and stacking faults. The examples showing here are from my own research with Professor Kevin Hamker. The dark lines in the left figure and the bright lines in the right figure are dislocations. The reason we can see the atomic level information in high-res TEM images is due to the phase contrast. Again, this example was from my own research with Professor Kevin Hamker, showing the nano twins in the boron carbide sample. The fourth section is spectroscopy. Imaging and diffraction will give you the structural information. Spectroscopy will give you the chemical information. The two spectroscopy techniques we're going to discuss are energy dispersive X-ray spectroscopy, EDS, and electron energy loss spectroscopy, EELS. Using EDS, you can get the chemical information. Using EELS, in addition to the chemical information, you can also get the chemical bonding information. From this example here, you can see the EELS spectrum of diamond looks very different from carbon-60 and graphite. Combining EDS and EELS with STEM, using an aberration-corrected TEM, 
you can get the chemical information of individual atomic columns. The figure here is from Cornell University and it's just striking. In the last section, we'll introduce some TEM related techniques. The first one is the scanning transmission electron microscopy, STEM. These STEM images were acquired by my student De Xing, highlighting the nanoprecipitates in a shape memory alloy. We will also talk about the precession electron diffraction. This technique can be somewhat viewed as EBSD inside TEM. Lastly, we'll talk about the aberration corrected TEM. The micrographs were taken from the Williams and Carter book. The image on the left has no aberration correction, while the one on the right is with the aberration correction. You can see the difference straight away. At the end of this course, I hope you will be able to develop a good understanding on how TEM works and what TEM can do to help your research. In the next video, we'll talk about why we use electron inside TEM and the resolution of TEM.